Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Gunod's Faust, which was shown at the Deutsche Oper Berlin, and this also marks its third performance since its premiere of June 19th of this year. The conductor was Marco Armiliato. The production was done by Philipp Stötzl. The assistant directors were Marco Rochka and William Robertson. The set design was also done by Philipp Stötzl alongside Heike Folma. The costumes were handled by Ursula Corduna. The lights were handled by Ulrich Niepel. The chorus master was Thomas Richter. And the dramaturgy was handled by Sebastian Hanusa and Anne Oppermann. Now, this is the second opera that I've seen that is based on the very famous Faust legend. The first one that I've seen in the Deutsche Oper Berlin was Berlioz, La Dame de Faust. And it was basically on live. This is the second one that I've seen, and it's also its most popular. In fact, I also have a CD of this opera, which stars Nikolai Gyaurov as Mephistopheles, Mirella Freni as Marguerite, Platito Domingo as Faust, and Thomas Allen as Valentin. And I'll get to that recording much later, and probably some other time in the near future. So, what makes this opera extremely popular? Well, it's not just because of the fact that it also has the very famous Faustian legend. You know, where Faust is an old philosopher thinking that his life is very useless until he summons the devil and then the devil makes an offer to be his, well, to be his servant until he dies and therefore when he dies he ends up being consigned to him. Faust falls in love with a girl named Gretchen or Margarita. Margarita gets wooed by Faust but ends up pregnant. Her child dies. Faust is constantly longing for her, but he is constantly being thwarted by Mephistopheles. And somehow, after like half truth after half truth, it seems as though that Faust is really losing his humanity and Mephistopheles is getting the upper hand and Gretchen gets redeemed and Faust, in some versions, he dies or even gets sent to hell or in some versions, he is redeemed. So it's a very, very interesting story and one that has been told through many generations and has also become like very well known in different operas. And speaking of Gunod's Faust, there are a lot of very well-known numbers in this opera. The choruses, for instance, like Ainsi le brisé légère, the one that goes The very famous chorus in the first act, not to mention Va ou bière, which is also the chorus sung in the carnival scene, or in the first act, and the soldier's chorus, Gloire Immortelle. And then we have the individual arias. We got Mephistopheles' Le Vaudor, and Vous qui faites l'endormie, Valentin's Avant que c'est lieu, Marguerite's Jewel Song, which I'm sure that you're very familiar if you would have seen uh, the Adventures of Tintin, and you would have seen Bianca Castafiores sing this aria, albeit in English, in a lower tone. And the one that goes... Yep. I'm sure that you recognize that aria as it has become a staple of the soprano repertoire. And a lot of sopranos have sung this opera, or this aria, and have pretty much made the character their own. And not to mention the title hero's um, grand aria, Salut de Mure Chaste, which is a very great vehicle for any lyric or spinto tenor. So, in short, this opera has very wonderful music, and it's no wonder why it's become extremely popular internationally. So let's get on to what I thought about the production, singers, and the conducting. Now the production of this opera took a very dark and very grim turn 
we start off with seeing Marguerite in solitary confinement and she's on a chair awaiting her quote-unquote death penalty and then we turn to an aged Faust and he's on his wheelchair it's not just some wheelchair but he has a lot of dexterous on him he's on life support and all that stuff and he plans to take his own life by using these pain-killing pills until Mephistopheles appears. Now, what also makes this interesting is that usually, in a lot of traditional Faust productions, the stage would go black and then we see Faust transform from the aged philosopher to young man. But in this production, his old man skin gets peeled off and then we see him as a young man. Therefore, he gets to be, like, wearing the same costume that Mephistopheles wears in the first act, which is a pink suit. And then we see all of these, like, chorus members and a lot of the extras with doll heads as masks, which I thought was really creepy, but actually kind of made the production really interesting and somehow darkly, well, enthralling, so to say. And... There were moments in which I was kind of like creeped out by how they looked and it was kind of weird as well. And but it was just it was just a sort of way to tell that this is a very dark world that we get we're getting ourselves into and it's a very dark tale that is not going to be for everyone to stomach in. So I think that was pretty much the message. And Siebel comes in looking as though that he is like Max from Where the Wild Things Are. In this version, or this production, he is basically a candy seller. A young boy who's selling candy, probably to really do it for a living. Probably to pay off, like, college expenses, school expenses, and all that stuff. We see him in a bunny suit, almost reminiscent of, like I said, Max from Where the Wild Things Are, which I thought was weird, yet somehow kind of made him say that, oh, he's basically the sweet, innocent boy who has to work his butt off every day in order to really get some cash. Basically, he's seen selling candied apples and a lot of candy and cookies. And then we also see that Marguerite doesn't really live in a cottage like like usual Faust productions, but in a trailer park in the woods, which I thought was really interesting. And then in the second like in the second half of the opera, we see that it's snowing, and this also makes the opera a lot darker as well. And also, in the first act, we see Valentin getting dressed, having his tattoo made for Marguerite while he is singing his serenade, which I thought was pretty weird, but I think it's kind of like the director's way of saying that, yes, Valentin is this manly man, but he is like a teddy bear towards Marguerite. So I think that was just pretty much the director trying to make us feel for this character as well. And what's also kind of cool was having Mephistopheles have these like five, well, five woman servants to really also do his bidding and to really follow him around. They're basically like the version of the Furies that like accompany Mephistopheles around or have been very well known to cause a lot of human beings strife and pain. So I thought that was really a great addition, especially when they stabbed um, Valentin. I thought it was really creepy, and I thought it was just really well done. And sure, traditional productions would have had Faust kill Valentin, but this was a very interesting turn, and I thought that it also made Mephistopheles much more controlling about the situation, and probably much more of a manipulator than he really is. The costumes were absolutely great. I feel that Martha's costume was also really great as well. I mean, with the poofy hair and the green costume, and like I said, Siabelle's costume. 
Not to mention Fausta and Mephistopheles costume. I really like them, but I probably would have asked for either red for Mephistopheles and blue for Faust, or probably even purple for the both of them, like a dark purple for the both of them. Pink just doesn't really mesh well with someone like the devil, but okay, who do I have to judge? I think it's just sort of like an interesting color treatment, but I probably would have had, you know, Mephistopheles in like a crimson color and Faust in a bluish color. So yeah, nitpicking aside, I felt like the production really heightened the dark atmosphere of this opera and the costumes and the concepts were very interesting and actually very colorful all around, even though the entire set design was very grim and moody just to really heighten that type of atmosphere that we usually feel in this opera. And now let's get to the singers. In the title role of Faust, we have Theodor Ilinsai, a name that I've heard so many times and a singer that I've heard a lot of great things about. In fact, he's very well known in a lot of the repertoire of the lyric tenor and the spinto tenor repertoire. And when I saw him live, I was completely blown away. He had such a magnificent voice. I know I'm going to sound repetitive, especially when I see a really wonderful singer on stage, but it's true. He has a very magnificent voice, a very well-controlled and very lyrical, yet very spinto-like tenor voice. He managed to sing all of his high notes very gloriously. They were all piercing, especially all of his B's, A's, and C's. They were like comets. His timbre is probably one of the most pleasing that I've ever heard. Almost like a combination of Nikolai Geda's very warm and solid and graceful technique with that of the piercing notes of a Franco Corelli and even that of a musicality of the great Giacomo Lauri Volpi. I felt like these tenors sort of really lived within his voice and made it blossom very beautifully. His acting as Faust was also pretty great as well. He didn't go crazy or he didn't go like over the top with his performance. He managed to keep his acting very well controlled and very precise and it was just a really great performance. In the role of Mephistopheles, we have Ildebrando d'Arcangelo, who I saw last year in Salzburg in the title role of Don Giovanni. And in fact, I've heard him several times on YouTube. Like, If you don't know him, he's basically a bass baritone and even a basso cantante who is very well known for his dashing great looks, which is very helpful in the roles of Don Giovanni and especially with this performance of Mephistopheles. He's also very well known in a lot of the bel canto roles and has really built up his repertoire in a lot of the bel canto roles of Rossini, Bellini, Donizetti, and also a lot of the Mozart roles as well. For example, like Don Giovanni, Leporello, and he even started out as Mazzetto, and also Don Alfonso and Guglielmo. So his Mephistopheles was well acted, well sung, and it was just a very, very wonderful experience seeing Mr. D'Angelo in this very iconic basso role. Yes, I would have loved a darker color singing this role, albeit in the form of Boris Christoph, Cesare Sieppi, Jerome Hines, Nikolai Gyalrov, and a lot of the other basso cantantes of the past. And in order to really sing the role of Mephistopheles, you really need a basso cantante voice to really do this role justice to really make him sound menacing and to really make him act menacing. In fact, I would say that Mephistopheles is pretty much a coveted basso role. It is so up there with the likes of Prince Gremin from Eugene Onegin, Filippo from Don Carlo, Ramphis from Aida, Sparafucile from Rigoletto, Banco from Macbeth, and to several extents, Mozart's Don Giovanni and Zarastro. So, Mr. Doc Angelo really fared wonderfully with such a very 
precise voice and a round, rich technique and such great theatricality that he's very well known for and not to mention his dashing great looks. And I will also add that Theodore Irinsai also had such grace, uh, excuse me, dashing, wonderful, great looks as well. So they're both totally on par with each other. And with Dark Angelo, he was just wonderful from beginning to end. He did not go hammy with his performance as Mephistopheles. Sure, he did chew the scenery from time to time, but it wasn't too big or too hammy. It was a very controlled performance, and it was, simply put, a dangerous performance that... Well, not really dangerous, but it, it, he really gave off that sense of danger in the sense that it wasn't, like, overacty, but you really felt his presence... You really felt that, you know, once you see him on stage, you know that shit's going to go down. So it was just a great performance coming from Ildebrando D'Angelo. What more can you expect from this gentleman? He's really great at whatever he does. Yes, he doesn't have the cavernous timbres of Giulio Neri or Boris Kristoff or Cesare Schiappi or Jerome Hines or John McCurdy, Nikola Yaurov, and many other bosses of the past, but he's held himself very well from the entire opera, and it was just a great performance all around. Singing the role of Marguerite is a very wonderful Bulgarian soprano who is extremely well known for her wide repertoire, Krasimira Stoyanova. Now, for those of you who don't know Krasimira Stoyanova, she is a Bulgarian soprano who is extremely well known for her very vast and very extensive repertoire. She started out as a light lyric soprano singing the likes of Susanna and Gilda. But somewhere along the lines, as she matured and got older, she sang a lot of the full lyric roles like Fiordaligi and the Countess Amaviva, and also the likes of Elisabetta di Valois, Antonia from Tales of Hoffman, Anna Bolena from Donizetti's Anna Bolena, Maria de Rohan, also by Donizetti, and many, many other roles from the bel canto, verismo, French, German, and Russian repertoire. Nowadays, she sings a lot of the spinto roles, like Elisabetta di Valois from Don Carlo, the Marshallin from Rosenkavalier, um, Ariadne from Ariadne of Naxos, Eva from Die Meistersinger from Nuremberg, and many, many other roles. So basically, she has sung roles from the light lyric soprano repertoire to the dramatic coloratura soprano repertoire to the full lyric soprano repertoire, even to the spinto soprano repertoire, and also some roles from the dramatic soprano repertoire, like Rachel from La Juive and Valentine from Les Huguenots. Hearing her as Marguerite was absolutely fabulous. I also heard her on YouTube as Rachel from La Juive, and I thought she was fabulous in that role as well. Hearing her as Marguerite, like I said, was just a great experience. She had a very solid technique. Her voice was very homogenous throughout all the registers. She did not sound shrieky in her notes. In fact, she sounded very full in all of the registers, helped by a very great technique, which was very solid and really wonderful singing from beginning to end and great theatricality. You could really feel the pain, what Marguerite goes through, especially in the last moments of the opera. You could really feel that pain, that suffering. And in the first act, she starts all sweet and kind of naive and also, well, just like any other young woman could be, and even falling in love with Faust, even though she just only sees him as a friend. However, things kind of took turn for the worse. She ended up pregnant. Marguerite ends up pregnant, and you could really feel the pain that she's going through. So I would say that Krasimira Stoyanova is definitely wonderful in her role as Marguerite. 
She was not only a fabulous and very homogeneously toned singer, but she was also a very involving actress as well. Singing in the role of her brother Valentin was Marcus Brück, who I saw in several productions in the Deutsche Oper Berlin. Here he had a very wonderful technique in his voice, very wonderful theatricality, and when he sang his curses to Marguerite, it was visceral. You could really feel the hate, the rejection, and the agony in his voice when he let out that final curse to Marguerite. It was just a thrilling experience. He was fabulous in all of the registers. He was very well controlled as a musician, but he really was an amazing actor as well, really putting all the stops in his role as Valentin, the valor that he has, the courage that he has as a man who was willing to be there for his sister. You could really feel it all. And yes, even though he does appear to be the macho man, he is kind of like a teddy bear towards Marguerite because he cares for her. You could really feel the power that he has in not only his voice, but also in his stage presence. His high notes were gleaming and gorgeous, and his stage presence was magnetic. Singing the role of Stiabel was Stephanie Loricella, who I also saw as Smeraldine from The Love of Three Oranges. She was able to make Siabel a very, very sweet and very gentle soul. And she sang her heart out very gorgeously as well. And she was definitely involving in this character. She really knew how to make this character come alive and really sing with such flying colors. Singing the role of Marta was Ronita Miller, who I also saw in several productions of the Deutsche Oper Berlin. Very fine voice, very fine theatricality, and she was still able to keep that plushness that she's extremely well known for. In the small role of Wagner, one of the students, we had Carlton Ford, who had a very fine voice as well, even though his role was extremely short. So overall, the singers, every single one of them, really gave it their all, and with such focused tones, very great techniques, great theatricality, and very wonderful, well, stage presences that each of them contributed. And the conducting done by Marco Armiliato was extremely solid all around. There were no moments at which, in which it dragged. In fact, it was just great all around. It was exciting from beginning to end. So overall, what a great day to really spend my Christopher Street Day weekend. With this performance of Faust and with all the singers really giving it their all, especially the orchestra, chorus, and to really make this dark yet very enthralling production come alive was just fabulous. So if you haven't seen this production of Faust yet, I highly suggest that you go check it out. It's a very interesting production, and it's also backed by such fabulous singing from Ilinsai, Tarcangelo, Stoyanova, Brook, Miller, Loricella, and Ford, and the great conducting done by Maestro Marco Amiliato. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for my review of... Le Bayadera, which is a ballet. So it's also going to be shown at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. So until then, I hope you all had a very wonderful Christopher Street Day. And good night, everybody.